Hello. Well, we were talking about Billy Jack just before <laughs> this started. Billy Jack. Not and Billy Jean. A, Billy Jack. Billy Jack. Yeah, that was an awesome uh, movie. Okay, so today, here we go. Critics live again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be an interesting show. Uh, why don't you're Jens? I'm Steve. If anybody doesn't know that, um, and because it, it wasn't in the promo, so yeah, exactly. We have to, yeah, <laughs> we'll we have it. to make sure that people know. Okay, exactly. But, but Phil's name was, of course. Yeah. So really, this is speaking just, of Phil. <laughs> This is just his show. <laughs> uh, they sent out a flyer that said critics with Philip Bloom. So apparently you're doing the whole show today. Go ahead. Perfect. That's all we ahead. need. <laughs> right, because okay. my opinion right. is... See, thanks for the intro. You can go now. <laughs> is worthless. Okay. <laughs> wow. uh, so what do you got to say for yourself? What have you been up to? I've just got back from Germany. Uh, I was over there for Photo Kina which is a, the big photo show that was every uh, two years. And then after that, I was, was a cat smuggler, and I smuggled four cats into the UK yesterday, legally smuggling, so not technically smuggling, but to, to go to new homes, um, stray rescue cats. Oh, cool. So that's been my, my weekend. Well, anything cool at Photokina while we're on the subject? <laughs> yeah, and, really. <laughs> there, was, there were cameras and lenses and other stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was the same, same sort of thing as every other show that I've been to this year. But just for you Americans, this will be cool. So yesterday, I started in the morning at uh, about 11 o'clock in Germany, and then I was in Netherlands, and then Belgium, then France, and then England, all within six hours. Can you do six countries in America? No. Why well, would we, we need six to? states? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Okay, let's bring Rachel. They're on. all the We've same, no. <laughs> oh no, oh, you know they're not all the same. Okay, Rachel, how's it going today? Hi, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see some people already starting to watch. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the record, all of the email blasts only have our guest names on them, and your names are very prominent in the description of the video that everybody is watching right now. Okay, so that's and... kind of a little slam right there. That's great. Nice way to start off today. I am very excited to watch the show because I really, in particular, really like one of them. So one of the videos that we're watching today. So I'm intrigued to hear what you guys have to say. We've got two really different shorts to look at. So let's get started. All right. Well, Rachel, you've kind of come to your own on this anyway, so I kind of want to hear your opinion. Now, I guess the, the flyer should say critics with Jens, Steve, Rachel, and Philip. Oh, boy. Now sounds I, good, now I have like to include everybody's name because I'm involved, therefore it has become infinitely more important. Okay, so now our names get in there. That's great. Right. Okay, let's... I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> really. I'm and we need to know which which of the which is the films that you like so much. I'd be curious to know. Actually, before, I think I know Victor one. Bart just wants to let you know, Bloom, that he doesn't care about Photokina. He just wants to see your cats, which I think everybody agrees with. So, oh boy. Well, I I drove. Well, I got Bertie here, so there we go. He's going to be in this. There you go. Well, Good I miss start. seeing Victor the others Bart. Are... I didn't go to IBC, so I miss seeing Victor Bart. So, Victor, how you doing? Um, and doesn't he owe us some kind of a button thing that we talked about for? A product. What is that? Yeah, no, he's creating, um, he's building, like Frank and Rigging, uh, a product. He's got a, a start stop for his GH5. Is he sending us that? No. Well, we, we have one. That. We have one. We have one. Okay, yeah. good, Victor. Okay, here we go. Let's roll that first clip.
Okay. All right. Phil, you're up. That was fantastic. How long was that? Uh, I don't know. Too long. Uh, control about a minute room. 30, I think. Okay. Minutes. Minute and a half? Yeah, Minute around, 30. I think it's a great that. example of how much you can squeeze into a minute 30. It was a lot of fun. It makes me want to get a zombie dog uh, to get my cats with her. I think they'll go well. I thought the animation was really nice. It's uh, CGI, but, to make, uh, but to, uh, to make it look a bit more retro. And the sound design was nice. Uh, the zombie sounded like you. Steve, when you talk, um, it's all I ever hear uh, that noise when you actually give me your opinions. But uh, I, I really, I thought it was a really lovely, sweet little thing. It's, it wasn't exactly deep, and you can kind of predict exactly where it was going to go. But that didn't, wasn't a bad thing. So uh, yeah, I really liked it. Oh well, you're breaking up a bit, but frankly, we don't care anyway. So um, <laughs> here's kind of what I think. Uh, actually, it's the kind of thing that you know how when you watch something one time. And you're like, oh, I didn't get that. And then you watch it a second time, and then all of a sudden you get it just a little bit more. Yeah. So I kind of got it a little bit more this time, where the first time I watched it, I was like, okay, so let me go through the story here. Because, you know, I mean, yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful, animation amazing, mm -hmm. sound design incredible, all that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Great. Had nine million laurel leaves on the, on the, the thumbnail. Great. Yeah. But what this is the part I got this time that was different from the first time, which is that photo that fell out of his pocket made it like, you know, they were best pals when before he was a zombie. So I'm trying to go through the story. The story is we were best pals before we were a zombie. I became a zombie and now I made you a zombie and now we're best pals again because we're a zombie. So it actually <laughs> kind of works better for me now when I saw it for the second time than it did the first time what if you've watched it three times what would happen i don't know it could be like you know my the best film of all time you know <clears throat> i could see all kinds of symbolism in it mm -hmm. what do you think well um it, it, it's one of those i mean these are not meant to be full-fledged stories you know what i mean this is sort of what we were bantering about on some of the other critics was it's not a story but yeah you can tell a story in a short time that may be true but i don't know that you always have to it's almost just like a moment you know what i mean uh, it doesn't have to be a fully fleshed out story a lot of times. I don't know if this person was trying to showcase their, their work because if, if that was the goal, I mean, they certainly did a fantastic job and had a little fun in the meantime, you know what I mean? So, so if it's just a short little sort of moment you want to show and showcase your work, it worked perfectly. I mean, I get that, but here's my situation. It's like if you're going to go to all this expense, and some of these things are incredibly elaborate. I mean, this took this guy time. This wasn't like something he just whipped together. Uh, and I'm not rep re referring to this particular project. I'm referring to pro projects in general. But if you're going to take this kind of time, why not have a great story to go along with it? Because I just did have somebody send me another video recently that I thought was a great story and had all the other components too. It was shot well, beautiful uh, grade to it, sound design amazing. So to me, it's like it seems like stories are sort of the afterthought. It's like. Whenever we get this new equipment and new technology, we, so, we sort of try to master it and show our prowess at it. But really, the thing that we need to show our prowess at is storytelling. Phil? I, I think it, um, I'm surprised it took you two attempts to understand it because <laughs> the, the photo falling out was the title, seek, the actual title of the film. And you, if you missed it, I don't yeah. know if you were scratching your balls or something at the time, <laughs> I don't know. It was a pretty tough thing to to miss i was um, but i was yeah i mean mate uh that's fine it's good it's fine uh so yeah i for me look i think it obviously acts as a calling card to this filmmaker to show their skills and i think you know the, the chance of getting proper feature work off this would be potentially very good so yeah and you know it's nice to see a little bit different something a bit cute with zombies you don't often get cute with zombies <laughs> i would actually agree with you for a change uh <laughs> Uh, I don't know about the scratching balls part, but I definitely uh, did not get that. I am a little stupid at times, so it did take me two times, and I think I'm going to take your advice and watch it three times, <laughs> and we'll see what I learn there. Rachel, now that you are a full-fledged member of the critics team, what is your opinion? I get an opinion. That's exciting. Um, first of all, um, we've got a comment here from Neil Master. who agrees with you, Steve. He says, great effects, needs more story. And um, 
for me, I, I did like it. I thought it was really funny. I thought the sound design was great and made me laugh. And I liked the final shot that was sort of a um, like a nod to The Walking Dead, that like big shot like panning up to a city. But for me, what kind of bugged me was it felt like it was made by three different animators. Like the background looked like one person, the guy looked like another person, and the dog looked like it was made by a third person. So there was just a little bit of a disconnect for me between the characters and the rest of the set. But I did think it was fun, which is always nice because I agree you don't see a lot of funny zombie movies with a walking with a uh, sort of an Evil Dead exception. Wow, I mean, Rachel, you are for sure now a full-fledged critic. Okay, we'll get back to the Neil Master thing. She, yeah, she's, somebody she's agreed. Wait a second. Wait a second. Exciting. I got to tell just... you something about Neil Master here. This is so. This guy is a friend of mine from high school. Okay. And when it, this is just going to be quick, but it's kind of funny. So uh, I did this music video in like 1980, I'm going to say two. And Neil Master was about 19 years old, okay? And he was like a production assistant on this. And we, this was a period thing we did in Michigan on, at Belle Isle. So we're talking, you know, 40, 50 extras in period costumes. And we sent Neil Master out with like all the money we had because I was 21 to get food and I think he went to a McDonald's or something and he comes back and someone took the money when he put it on the counter and we have 50 some odd people on set with no food <laughs> so that's just the funny Neil Master story what were you saying Phil I don't think I said anything did I yeah you were you, you chimed <laughs> I think in so. okay go ahead Jens uh, well, oh, right. All right. Okay. I don't remember. Sorry, I dozed off when you talk. Sorry. It's just a thing that happens. Oh, God. You are unbelievable. <laughs> it's quite okay. good. I mean, I often, play, I often, if I get insomnia, I often play one of your videos and it just put, knocks me out straight away. That's great. You're, you're yeah. so incredible, too, mate. Um, maybe just to finish off this, this segment <laughs> with uh, this video. Um, again, I, I, I don't think everything that people make have to has to be a story you know a full story it can just be a cute moment and i think that's what this was and it was that successfully you know what i mean okay let's move on to clip two play clip two
I like that one. Okay, go on. Um, this one actually had a lot of layers. I mean, it's not, again, it's not like a deep, you know, amazing story like Gone with the Wind, but it doesn't need to be again. Uh, what I got out of it was that he started to get more and more literal with things, and then eventually it kind of merged to where reality, him falling down, shut that door and got her locked in there. So it was kind of fun that to see that sort of merging of, uh, of you know, the, the two in a way, you know what I mean? And it gives people a glimpse of Foley artist, of a Foley artist at, at work, you know? You, did, you don't need to actually paint nails like he did, you know, to, for any of that. And in fact, I couldn't even hear that anyway, except for the blowing. So it was a lot <laughs> of fun little things in there, you know? All right, well, I'm gonna go to my next favorite opinion, which is Rachel, what do you got to Ooh. say? <laughs> I'll take that. I really liked this one. I thought it was really funny. One of my favorite, I agree with Jens that it did have a lot of layers. One of my favorite things about it was that it started out and you thought you were watching one thing. It had very serious music. The um, You're watching like a very serious artist at work. And then it started transitioning into something else, into a really funny piece. And when he, I agree, yeah, when he all of a sudden was actually painting nails, I was like, okay, I'm watching something very different here. And just uh, the credits, him following the duck around with the mic just cracked me up. I thought it was really, really fun and smartly edited. And I loved the music as well. Um, I would say that, I mean... <sighs> That obviously took a huge amount of effort. That is no five-second shoot, mm -hmm. you know. I love the look of it, too. Yeah, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It looked great. It was lit, you know, feature-like. It was beautiful. Everything. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Well, obviously, the sound design's beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. But without that, that show is nothing. Yeah, right. Literally. <laughs> right. But, um, I, well, you know. Well, even the score. Or was that original score? Because that music was yeah, fit I'm sure. perfectly Yeah, I'm that. sure. Yeah, he was playing it at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Well, but uh, I mean, um, I liked it. It was just, uh, you know, it didn't knock my socks off. I mean, I was kind of like, uh, you know, after a while, it kind of just droned on a bit for me. It was good. I'm not going to say it wasn't good, but I mean, I have to also go with my gut. In other words, did I just go, oh, yeah, that was great. I loved it. It was like, it was good. I mean, I liked it. Bill? Were you sleeping again? Yeah, Watch. I, um, he loved it. He loved it. I, so I had to be, I had to of a new so I had to just take that sorry um, so yeah okay so I thought it was I thought it was really uh, really entertaining uh, I really like the way that you had the handheld shooting for the the film and some lovely beautifully lit tripod shots for the actual Foley and the build-up of the more it became more and more ridiculous and I really enjoyed that the only thing I would say is it's slightly um, I think they could have done the end bit a bit clearer or cleaner because it what it felt like is that he accidentally shot himself killed himself and therefore he was no longer around and he was driving her rather than she was the one driving him the moment he was no longer around no she couldn't do anything more she was trapped so that's how i kind of saw it but it wasn't completely clear with that because it was you know he fell on a tight shot i didn't quite get an idea what it was and i didn't like the shot of the screen because it, it looks like just a superimposed image on a TV. Right? I always prefer if you you actually film screen so it looks more natural rather than something superimposed on it. But the, I mean, that's a little bit of nitpicking just for that. But just the ending for me, just it was, I really wanted, it felt like it wasn't quite clear exactly what, I think it could have been done in a slightly different way to make it a little bit clearer as to what happened to him. Wow, I totally agree with Phil on this. What? I know. Here's what I thought. Uh, I mean, I was I, I, just as he said that, that made me think of something. And I don't know if I'm saying what you were saying, but I think that he should have accidentally shot himself with the gun with, and somehow tie that mm. in with the door closing and maybe she falling on the ground or something. It would have mm. had more of a shocking ending. The ending was mm -hmm. weak. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to say before in a nice way. I would agree. I mean, it's a little weak, it, it, but yeah. it could be that in this case, and sometimes it works, where they leave it open to your interpretation. I don't always like that. I like a clear ending. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but I mean, it would have been exciting had he shot himself by accident. Yeah. So now that he's such a calculating guy that, 
a boo-boo happen and then she's gotta now deal with the sound effect of his boo-boo mm -hmm. so then he could have made it she could have made i don't know who made that actually i want to say he she i don't remember who it is but they could have made an interesting change in the story going from him following to her to her following him mm -hmm. Or that she has no sound after Would that. Would it be nice? Know? Oh, that's great. How about we Yeah, that's exactly said? what I was going to say. <laughs> I, that's exactly what I was going to say, because I thought if, if he killed himself or accidentally got killed by that, and she was total, was no more sound, and she tried to make sound and nothing happened, would have been really nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. A nice way of having it, you know. Try, that's perfect. That's, I love that. That would have been a really strong edict, a strong, strong ending. Um, but, you know, it's... It, it works really well for ninety five percent of the film, and it's just that ending could have been um, a, a, something that could have, would have left. Uh, it would have made you remember it much more mm -hmm. because it would have been a stronger, cleverer, um, more surprising ending. Bigger twist, right? Now uh, I wonder yeah. if other people have similar comments or completely disagree with us as usual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got. I really like that idea because I just read it, saw it as that she was he was falling off the heels. But I'm loving what you guys are saying about the gun, and we've got some people agreeing here. We've got uh, Neil who says you can't introduce a gun and then not have it go off, like Chekhov's gun kind of vibe. And um, he also agrees with you, Bloom, about um, having that screenshot of the um, the dress at the end. He says he thinks it was a little too long on that shot of the dress and that he was waiting for one more sound. And maybe that would have clarified whether or not he had completely disappeared or whether he was still part of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree generally. Yeah, good points. Mm -hmm. Okay, Phil, this was fun today. Yeah, you wouldn't have. Been, yeah, it was good. I wouldn't have thought you could make a sort of a film which would, you know, you could easily. I thought I was initially. I thought it was going to be a, doc, a mini documentary when I saw the title and the fact that it was a narrative, little narrative short was really a nice, as I said, a nice way of showing what Foley artists do and some of the ridiculous things sound-wise as they do to replicate natural sounds to make it sound better than the real life does. And that's a fascinating thing. And I've, I've often done things like that. I remember doing, trying to get a sound effect of, of buttering toast and I actually used one of a razor on the face, a dry face, and uh, it sounded much better than the real thing. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. You know what sounds great is not hearing half of Phil's words, right? So Yeah, that, <laughs> oh, no, just, oh, that's excellent. <laughs> I had to yeah. get in on it, sorry. Yeah, all right, Rachel, why don't you sign us off today? All right. Fine. Thank you, everybody, for watching. It's good to have you again, Phil. And thank you to ICANN, who provide all the lighting for our show. Uh, next week, we'll have Fatima Asghar talking about the process of our show, Brown Girls, being picked up by HBO. Should be an awesome show. We will see you there next Wednesday at 11 CST. Bye-bye.